For those of you who don't know, my name is Todd Dunlop. I'm the principal here at Warfield Middle School. On behalf of Mrs. Miley and myself, the administrative staff, we'd like to welcome you to our first parent university for the year. We have an exciting follow-up topic from last year. If you are like me, you probably have a cell phone, and you may have all of these apps she's going to show you on it, but like me, don't really know much about them, especially something Snapchat. There's no words. There's no nothing. It shows up. My kids put something on there. The little thing turns purple. I flick it. I see what they do. I really don't know how that happens or how to get there. She's going to be doing that to us tonight. So this evening, we have Miss Becca Rusnock. She is the co-founder and creative director of Woodward Rusnock Consulting. She's a former journalist and an expert in social media, which is a good thing because I'm far from an expert in social media. Becca is most widely known for her Instagram account, at IG Bethlehem, which has over 18,000 followers. That's a big deal to your kids. Not as big a deal to me, but it's a big deal to your kids. She's on a mission to help close the communication gap between technology and the communication gap created by technology and social media. And she is a 2000 graduate of Parkland High School. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to her. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're good. Uh, so the ADD in me wants to get up and move around a lot, but uh, there's a lot of things plugged in over here and water and stuff, so I'm going to kind of set up over here, if that's okay with everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming out. Um, I am a Parkland grad, so it's nice to be kind of back home. I uh, was the, part of the first class to graduate from the new high school, so I'm not that old, right, you guys? No, nothing, from the peanut gallery. Uh, so I'll first off, by start saying by uh, start by saying hello, and um, I uh, introduce myself to people as saying that I'm famous, right? So I use this word, and my friends make fun of me all the time, and that's okay. You guys can laugh too. Um, but I am not famous out here in the world. I'm actually famous online. So I'm famous in particular on an app called Instagram. Which is anybody familiar with Instagram? A couple people heard of it. You guys? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I operate, own and operate the largest, most interactive account in the Lehigh Valley, which means that I have more followers and I, and I have a higher interactive interaction rate than Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, Just Born, Sands Bethlehem, Dorney Park. Um, all of them follow me and uh, they don't get the kind of conversations that I do. I, I Not only do I grow followers, I teach my clients how to interact with their followers, how to turn a, follow, like a follower into an actual customer in the business world. Um, and I actually do this mostly anonymously. Um, there's been a couple articles in like the newspaper and in one magazine, but uh, for the most part, people have no idea who I am. They just know that there's this like mysterious photographer that wanders around Bethlehem and posts pictures almost every day. I take all of my photos with my iPhone um, and edit them with my iPhone, and uh, this is the result. You can see that bottom row is, I think, from earlier last week, but um, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. I'm going to actually, oh, I don't know what we did there. Not a good start here. So uh, that, that's what, my, uh, that's what my, my account looks like. I talk a little bit about numbers with my clients because, oh man, I think I stepped. This is why I should sit still. So we look at the numbers up here. The, actually, the 18.9K is a really big deal. When you get the K on any kind of social media, it means you've hit the 1,000 mark. Um, and usually most people kind of hover around the hundreds. If you get to like one or 2,000, that's a really big deal. Once you get into the, into the Ks, that's, that's really good. But what's important to know about this is it's not just that I have such a large following. It's that I don't follow a lot of people back and that I haven't posted that many photos. Um, sometimes you'll see somebody who has, you know, 6,000 followers and they follow 20,000 people. That's a little bit lame in the social media terminology because it means you kind of are stalking a lot of people, but you're not actually getting anybody to follow you back. So uh, I was doing this since about 2013, and I was working for the time at the with the city of Bethlehem. And uh, I kind of got to the point where I was done with that job. I kind of done all I could do. If you guys are familiar at all with Steel Stacks, I worked on that. I worked on the NCC campus over on the south side, and a lot of cool projects over on the former Bethlehem Steel property. But came time to kind of go out and do my own thing, and I started a company called Woodward Rusnock Consulting, which is my last name and my partner's last name together. We didn't get too crazy with the name. We just tried to keep it simple. We are a uh, consulting firm, but I describe us as a creative problem-solving agency. Uh, I'm very creative. I'm very left-brained. have a lot of energy and like to move around and draw and co like color things and write. And uh, my partner is a city planner, so she's very organized and very much more of the right-brained and uh, kind of keeps the company on track while I try to grow our, 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 uh, our, our 
our customers. Um, so we primarily do economic development because that's where we both kind of came from. That's our background. So we work with small communities um, kind of across Pennsylvania. We also work with a lot of real estate agencies and uh, real estate developers, construction managers, architecture, things like that. So part of what I do is I specialize, I'm sorry, I specialize in public relations, marketing, branding, and social media. And I, we offer trainings to different companies. So a lot of small businesses, they have no idea how to use Facebook. They don't know how to use Facebook ads. They don't understand YouTube. Um, they don't know Twitter. They're, should I get a Tumblr, um, Instagram? That's Visco. That's a, another app you guys might be familiar with, Snapchat. And then Musical.ly. So I would go into different offices and train people on how to use these. And I, would, I was talking to marketing professionals for the most part, advertising a little bit, but mostly marketing, PR backgrounds, communication backgrounds. And at the end of all these training sessions, people would say, hey, what is my kid doing here? What does this mean? This is my kid's account. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't know anything about these apps. I have no idea what my kid's doing. All I know is that all day they're on their phone. So I started to kind of notice that this was a trend. And I thought, well, there's, there appears to be, I'm an entrepreneur, so there appears to be a need here where parents are kind of, and not just parents, but a certain age group is starting to fall behind when it comes to technology. And I believe that that is a really bad thing because social media is the most powerful communication tool that's ever been invented. Um, I studied communications back when I was in college. You learn uh, personal communication, like a phone call or a letter, and you learn mass communications like the movies, TV. Social media is the first time that we've ever had those two things coexist. So I can actually have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, which is witnessed by everybody in this room. Not only everybody in this room, everybody in the city, everybody in the state, pretty much everybody in the world. So that's a very powerful thing. I have a lot of respect for social media. Um, it is a very serious industry. A lot of these companies are valued at billions of dollars. This is not a side kind of fun project. Um, I had one client who we were working on Facebook and he said to me, you know, I don't, I don't really trust this. Is this a real, is this a real thing? And I was like, I mean, they have investors. They're just as big as GE. I, I, can't, I can't describe it any bigger than that. So people are starting to understand that this should be taken a little bit more seriously. Um, a lot of times what I find with parents is they feel like it is child's play. or Social media is a thing just for teenagers or it's just for kids. I can tell you factually that is incorrect. 78% of all Americans have social media accounts. That's a pretty incredible number considering that 78% of Americans don't agree on anything, which I'm sure you all know by the election. We can barely get, get that together. So... Uh, 78 of us are on some kind of social media account, and that includes things like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, those are kind of like the big three popular ones. Worldwide, you're looking at just about 2 billion people that are using social media. Again, that's a huge number, and that's way more than just teenagers. There just aren't that many teenagers on the planet. Um, that, that being said, teens do tend to play a very important role in social media because, like with all technology, they tend to be early adopters. So they do kind of set the a little bit more of like the standards and practices and sort of the uh, here's how you should act on this app, here's what's weird that you do, here's what isn't weird, here's how you be cool, here's how you're lame. It all kind of stems from a very teenage mindset. Uh, so what exactly are my kids doing? Now after I had talked to several of my clients about this, this, I, this is a cartoon that I drew to make them laugh, but this is really what it looks like to them. They feel the, the clients that I work with felt very shut out. They felt that their kids had all of this interaction with their phone and they kind of felt like they were on the sidelines even though they themselves had a phone and used it widely. I mean, I'm talking about people who actively use Facebook but have no understanding of Snapchat. People who tweet 30 times a day for their business but really have no understanding of what it is their kid is following on Tumblr. So in, sh in short, what your kids are doing is they're communicating, right? They're creating, they're sharing, they're questioning. Uh, they're arguing. They're doing all the same things that we do offline. They just do it online. Um, there's a pretty well-known movie about Facebook. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen it. It's uh, Mark Zuckerberg. It's like Mark Zuckerberg's story, and it's like a dramatized version of Facebook. But at one point, he says, and I truly think this is obnoxious, but it's also true. He says, you know, we used to live in farms, then we lived in cities, and now we live online. And as obnoxious and millennial as that is, it's also very, very true. So what I did is I took. Um, broke down all social media, so this applies to every social media site, um, and I call this the six basic functions of social media. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you know it doesn't matter what platform we're on. This this will apply to everything that currently exists, and I cannot fathom them inventing anything that this doesn't exist to. And again, this is based in very old communication theory about what it is we do when we talk to one another and how we communicate. So there's post content, there's your profile. There's a stream, there's messaging, 
there's paid content, and there are settings. Um, and we're going to run through like each of those. Now, one of the things, and I think Todd mentioned it a little bit, is it's very intimidating to sign up for a new social account because you'll see there are less and less words on there. Um, like, for example, early on in MySpace, it would say, post a photo, and then you'd click it and you'd post a photo. It, it, things have evolved away from that really because of more stylistic design choices to make things look more elegant, like to make an app look a little more elegant, it has less words, it doesn't look as cluttered. And also because social media is global, and if you were gonna have a, you wouldn't invent an app right now that only worked in America. It just wouldn't make any sense. You'd have to make sure that that app worked in France, and in Germany, and in Spain, and in China. And in order to have the apps work in those places, you would have to put the different languages in, and that's gonna eat up a lot of space in your app. So. We've kind of moved away from these different languages and we're back to symbols, which is kind of where communication started anyway. So nice little, uh, little around the world that we've gone there. So in, in each of these categories, I'm going to show you what a typical symbol for these functions are too. So that, that way you'll be able to find them when you look at the different apps. So post content. This is also color coded um, because it's easier for me to remember things that way and I find that that's a good device for other people to remember. And uh, I, I will show you how to color, like what the color code, how it works once we get into the specific apps. So on post content, this allows users to create and share content. And content can be anything. It's words, it's images, so pictures, it's, it's GIFs, it's, which are like little animated photos, if anybody's ever seen one of those. Um, it's videos, it can be animations, it can be uh, any, like, like collage, like really anything. And, and um, at this point, with the things that our iPhones and our, and our other phones can do, um, you can really create anything. I make full, full movies on my phone for different clients, and I don't use anything else other than my phone. So I can literally lay in bed and just make you know, aerial photograph overview of the new development in Easton, and here's what it's going to look like, and we can put this on TV tomorrow if we wanted to. So we have an incredible ability to create content. Content also includes likes and comments, which um, sometimes are called favorites or upvoting is like a like. Um, every social media also allows you to kind of, it's like a reaction to what someone else has posted. So likes and comments, it all falls under content. Typical symbols for posting content is it'll be like the outline of a camera, or sometimes it's a plus sign or a circle. Your profile, now so early social media, we're talking like Friendster and MySpace, is anybody, is anybody on MySpace? Does anybody remember MySpace? Those are some great days. Those are some good days on MySpace, right? Yeah. Uh, you don't remember. There's no way you remember MySpace. I don't believe it. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so the profile, when, this was, when the social media was kind of being designed, was kind of your corner of the internet. That you were, be able, you were able to carve out your corner of the internet. It would be totally yours. Uh, you could have your own pictures there. You could have the music you like playing. You could have a different colored background if you wanted it. It would be more designed to be about yourself. We have kind of evolved away from this profile to more of a, I'm interested in what other people are doing. Like I know what I'm doing. I don't need to be reminded all the time of the pictures that I posted, but I wanna, I wanna see what other people do. So while the profile is not as significant as it once was, it still plays a very important role in social media. Um, like I said, personalized space. Now this is what's really important to teenagers because a lot of times their profile isn't necessarily who they are, it's who they'd like to be perceived as. So you may see, uh, like a freshman football player, and if you look just at his, at his uh, Instagram account, you're like, wow, this kid, he must be an amazing football player. It looks like he's got all these star plays, and this is great. And then you find out in real life, he's kind of a bench warmer. But in his profile, he wants you to think that he's a star. He's showing you all his equipment. You know, he's just taking pictures of himself catching balls or kicking or whatever he's doing. So the profile is supposed to be your corner of the internet, and it has now evolved into what I want other people to think that I am. Typical symbol for a profile is usually it's like generally the outline of a person, like it's kind of like your head and like shoulders. That's typically the profile symbol. Uh, your stream is where you view all of the content that's been posted by others. Like now on Facebook, the, when you log into Facebook, the thing that opens up is, is your timeline, right? That's a stream of everything that, you know, anybody that you follow, all your friends, any kind of advertisements that's, that's uh, targeted to you, that's all going to appear in your stream. Um, and Fairly recently in the evolution of the, the internet, we've, we've come to infinite scrolling. Uh, we used to use tabs a lot more, and now we just scroll forever because we have so much, there's so much content that's posted that you really can just scroll and lose an hour, and then you're late for work. So um, that's, all, that's all in the, in the stream. And um, 
apps nowadays will attempt to personalize your stream. So like if, even if you and I had the exact same friends, which would be weird, but it's possible, um, my stream might not look like yours because they're going to target things that I'm interested in, ads that I'm, that, you know, things I might want to buy or concerts I might want to go to. The app is going to look at things that you like or things that you enjoy and you're showing the app that you enjoy something by clicking like or by visiting a page numerous times. They're going to try to get that in your stream. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well with uh, paid advertising. Those, the paid advertising and the stream go, go, go very closely together. Uh, messaging is another, uh, it, it was it, it kind of evolved from like early functions of the internet. It was, um, you know, a way that now you have your own personal space, don't you want to use it to talk to people? So um, I remember early on, my, uh, my brother's friend, my older brother's friend was this whiz with like DOS. Like before we had even Windows, he could like log into the back of the internet and he would call you and say, hey, I'm going to message you, which was weird, and then we'd hang up. And then we'd like type messages to each other. This is like 89, you know, so this is like a long time ago. But messaging has evolved into a much more complex function. Um, typically allows users to talk privately to one another. You can also do small group, but you, you're not really going to see messaging more than, I mean, you know, more than 10. I mean, if you're getting, you can get uh, small groups that are like 30 or 40, but that just gets to be a little too crazy. And your messaging app is typically going to look like a speech bubble or an inbox. So remember like your inbox and your outbox on your desk, that's, that's kind of the symbol of messaging. Paid content. Uh, this is something that I find really important to talk to parents about because I, what I've found is that teenagers fail to recognize when something is an advertisement or when something is spam. And I find that really strange because for me I see it right away. I, don't, um, I can tell if you try to sell me something. but. I don't know what it is, they just, they just don't see it. And also parents struggle with that too. So if you remember online advertising back in the day, you'd log on and there'd be like six pop-up ads and it was just the most annoying thing ever. Um, we've kind of gravitated away from pop-up ads, thankfully, and we've started to create ads that look like content. So um, for Instagram, for example, you will, it, it, an ad will just throw up right, it'll just show up right in your, in your feed right in your stream, and it looks just like a post from a friend of yours, but it turns out it's from Cabela's, or it's from Nike, or it's from McDonald's, but it's really an advertisement. Um, typically, an ad will be marked ad, or it will say sponsored on it, because there is a little bit of honesty in advertising, so you will see that. Um, celebrities on social media will sometimes say that, it, that they're posting about a product because it's sponsored, and they'll you know, put hashtag sponsored or sponsored or something like that. So that's how you know that that's paid content. And then finally, settings. This allows you to control the app. So if you don't want people to view your Facebook page or you want your tweets to be blocked, this, that all happens in settings. Um, apps allow for a very wide variety of privacy and customization. Like I said, my Facebook is going to look totally different than your Facebook. And my Twitter the same way and, and Instagram. Um, which is amazing but frustrating for people because they, they think, I just want to use the regular app. Well, the app kind of wants you to be an individual and set it the way you want. This is where you're also going to find your location services. You want to turn that kind of stuff off, especially if you have younger teenagers. You might not want them to have, ha, or have, allow other people to have access to their accounts. And this is almost always a rivet, um, but sometimes it looks like a flower, like a little circular rivet with uh, lines coming off of it that occasionally looks like a flower. Right, so we, I feel like I talked really fast. We went through um, all those six basic functions, and I'm going to stop you guys right now and ask if there's any questions. I know I went super fast, and I can feel that I went too fast. But everybody generally seems to, to understand what's going on. Okay, so I want to talk specifically about Snapchat, because this is an app that I get a lot of questions about. In fact, it was probably the number one thing that I got questions about um, working with clients. They said, Okay, I've, I've kept up with Facebook, I've kept up with Twitter, kept up with Tumblr, kept up with Instagram. I am lost when it comes to Snapchat. So to give you a little bit of background, um, Snapchat was started by a guy named Evan Spiegel. And in April of 2011, Evan was, I believe he was a senior at Stanford, and he had a design class. And in the class, he pitched this idea for a selfie app where the photos and videos would self-delete. And his class laughed at him because 2011 was a time when we were still thinking that we should save every single photo that we took. And Evan said, you know, your photos are taking up an enormous amount of space on your phone, and is it really, really, really important to keep that picture 
of a recipe that you screenshot it and you didn't really like anyway? Do you really need 600 selfies before you went out that night? Do you really need to save this stuff? So this was basically a revolutionary idea. His class laughed him out of the building. Today, Snapchat is it's now part of Snap Inc. They just kind of reformed the company. It's valued at about $20 billion. That's billion with a B. And he's engaged to a Victoria's Secret model. So Evan did fairly well for himself. <laughs> um, but this idea of these disappearing photos, these temporary photos, was a revolutionary idea at the time. And um, it kind of, early Snapchat was kind of known for pornography and for people sending like naked photos to one another, which is not the greatest thing to be known for. Um, I will say that sadly pornography is part of the internet. There is not a social media app where it doesn't exist. Porn was one of the first things that people put online. And I find that really sad because we were given this incredible, amazing tool. And the first three things that were on the internet was pornography, cat videos, and 80s nostalgia. So I, I don't know why those choices were made. I wasn't quite old enough to be making those choices, but um, it, it's a reality. Um, I think you should protect your kids. I know who, who spoke to you last year, talked a lot about internet safety. But I also think that just because an app has that kind of reputation does not mean that that app is bad. Um, I started using Snapchat because I was one of those people who had a lot of photos that I just didn't need. I, I, I would take pictures of you know jokes and send it to friends, and it's like, I don't need this, but I'm never going to go back through my photos and delete them, but if it's going to self-delete, then I'll never have to think about it. So I love Snapchat. I, well, I tell clients that it's a great tool for storytelling, which is a lot of what we do online, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate of it. So this is, this is a screenshot of what Snapchat looks like when you open it up. Now, the yellow box with the ghost in it, that ghost's name is Ghostface Chilla, which is how you know that Evan invented Snapchat when he was in college. And uh, that is also the app icon. So if you see that on your kid's phone, that means they have Snapchat. Um, this, the black screen is actually, when you open Snapchat, it's a live, it's your live camera. So that would be really distracting to talk about, so I just blacked it out. Um, everything that's in color, like the little Snapchat ghost at the top, the blue bubble at the bottom, and the purple bubble at the bottom, that means that I have notifications. This gets a little distracting when we do the color coding, so I'm gonna just turn those off. So I'm gonna walk you through the six basic functions where they are on Snapchat, and then we're gonna switch, hopefully this is working yet, we're gonna switch to a live feed of my phone, and I will show you like what a Snapchat session looks like, so you have a little bit better idea of what it is your kids are doing, and I promise you, you will be like, wow, that was a lot of fun, because when I show this to other people, even when I show it, my mom is like in her 60s, when I show this to my mom, she was like, this is fun, this is funny, I like this, this is goofy and weird, and perfect for teenagers. And really everybody. We can all enjoy goofy weirdness from time to time. So we start off with post content. That large button right in the middle, that is what operates your camera. So uh, one touch click is gonna take a still photo. If you press and hold it, uh, you're gonna get a video. Then your profile. Now on Snapchat, your profile is split into two parts. That ghost up at the top is part of your profile, and then down below the little circle is your, it's called your memories on Snapchat. And that's part of your profile. It's where you can save photos, you can save videos, you can save stories that you make. Then your stream is gonna appear where those three balls are on the right. That's part of your stream. And then we have messaging, Snapchat. In Snapchat, it's called chat, and that is the box over to the left there. And then we have paid content. This thing keeps on plugging. Paid content, like I said before, falls right along into your stream. You'll be watching stories on Snapchat, and I hope this works, but we're gonna, we're gonna watch some stories on Snapchat and an ad will pop up just in the midst of a story that's paid content. And then also, um, Snapchat a couple years ago reached out to I think a dozen uh, publishers like National Geographic, ESPN, BuzzFeed, and said, hey, do you wanna create unique content for, content for Snapchat and we'll put it in front of our three million users? A lot of them said yes. Today there's about 30 publishers that, that use it. And I gotta tell you, National Geographic Snapchat story is absolutely amazing every day. If you, don't, if you guys don't watch it, I highly recommend. There's some really cool stuff on there. And then the settings is actually gonna fall beneath the profile. So it's a little bit hidden, that makes it a little bit frustrating, but that, that is where it is. So this screen looks very confusing with all the color coding, and like Todd said, we noticed there's no words. There's no, nothing says profile, nothing says chat, nothing says message. Um, I will say when you first sign up for Snapchat, there is a step-by-step um, a -step guide that is really helpful to follow. So if you're kind of new to the app, I recommend taking the two minutes 
and just running it through with yourself. And then you can also access it later. So I'm going to switch screens here. Got all kinds of stuff up here. There we go. All right, so this is my live phone right now. Got a lot of messages. It's like an hour away from my phone. That could be a lot. Yeah, not bad. So Snapchat down in the bottom row. We're going to see it in one second. There we go. So we see like that's the live camera that we talked about. Yep, everybody can wave. Um, and if I, uh, if I tap that large white button in the middle, that's the outline, that's going to take a photo. So we'll get three guys. Bam, gotcha. Um, so Snapchat has a lot of cool features to allow you to be creative even if you're not really that creative. And one of those is drawing. So the pen, that's like the top right corner. That's where we're going to start from there and go across. That's the pen. If we tap that, we can draw things like that. Um, it's a little difficult to draw with your finger. Um, a stylus is kind of lame to carry around, but like, obviously you could if you wanted to. Um, you can also get all kinds of colors. I mean, there's you know an enormous amount of there's blues, every every kind of color you would want. And then the little back arrow that's just to the left is going to allow you to delete those. So I'm tapping there. And then next to that, that T is text. Pretty straightforward. So if we tap that, we can write. Hello. There we go. And if you, if you tap the T again, it gets really big. Um, Snapchat also has stickers. Stickers are kind of a relatively newer way to be creative on apps. If anybody did the uh, recent iPhone update to message, they now integrate stickers. And this seems pointless, but I describe it as, remember when you pass notes in like high school? And if you had a friend who was really artistic, your note would come in your hand as like this cool folded up football. Or a friend of mine used to make cranes, which was awesome, like the bird. And then it would be all decorated inside. If you're not creative like that, um, stickers can help you be creative. So you tap that button, and you're given just hundreds of options of stickers that uh, different Snapchat hires artists to make, uh, which is great. So here's a panda bear. Um, Put that with you guys. <laughs> so in the bottom left hand corner you see the number three. If we tap that we get a couple options for how many seconds this photo this photo will appear to your friends or appear in your story if we add it to our story. So um, I usually just do three seconds just because like that's plenty of time but if you don't really know what you're doing you set it to ten no one's gonna like look at it for that long. Uh, the second button is memories and that's where you store your content. And then that third button is your story, which I will add to that, and then we can take a look at it. So story, this is what we talked about. This is part of your stream. Um, this is where all your friends' content is. And then your story is up at the top. Um, so you can, the three, three circles that are all the way to the right, we tap that. We can look at how many people have viewed our story. So a big complaint that I get from parents about Snapchat is I can't see what my kid is doing on there because the messages disappear. Well, your messages are going to stay in your story for 24 hours, and you can also view who viewed your kid's story. So if we like tap on that one, um, we can see these are all the people that viewed my story that I posted. I think this was from last night. So if you know your friend, uh, if you know your kids, their friends' usernames. If you want to ask what those are, that's where uh, you can find that. And then your story is going to automatically play when you tap on that circle. This is my dog sleeping. A lot, a lot of my Snapchat is my dog, a lot. This was uh, here at Orfield, and then that's the one that we just took. Uh, so if you can see, the, the kind of the point of the story is that you're sharing what you did that day. Um, for my clients, I tell them like to tell a story. Uh-oh. Hold on. Now, um, paid content comes up. Remember we talked uh, about the, ad the advertisers who, like the publishers? So there's, you know, Cosmo is in there. ESPN is always neat. I'm trying to find National Geographic. Always has amazing, amazing stuff. So, well, snapped us back. So these are actually individual stories and videos that you can read, you know, while you're writing in Snapchat. And uh, again, to read them, you swipe up. So you don't have to tap on anything. You can scroll through. And then to get to the next, because it's usually like five or six stories per publication. So you swipe over. Getting a lot of spiders here. This is freaking me out a little bit. Oh, that was a person. 
Now these are paid content because these, average, these uh, publishers use Snapchat, but you see right there in the corner where it says ad, this is an ad. So see that right in the bottom right hand corner it says ad? So that's an ad for Volkswagen that they have probably targeted people who travel. My mom is blowing up Snapchat right now. Um, <laughs> this ad, they targeted people who travel. So typically people who travel will use National Geographic. That's like a very well-known traveler's magazine. So they're trying to get you to buy a Golf Volkswagen. So you see that just totally seamlessly came up in the midst of that, what, that viewing. And then to get rid of it, we just keep swiping more National Geographic, pretty neat stuff. Um, a lot of this is really interactive. They'll give you things that you can, like if I want to send this story to my mom, which is going to confuse her, but will be pretty funny, you just press and hold, and then you bring up this screen, which looked like the earlier screen, where I can you know, add text and color, and I'll just tell my mom, this is a test. and then send it right back to, I can send it to my mom, and I'll send it to my sister too, because she knows what's going on. So there we go. So that is your paid content. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your profile. So Snapchat came up with this really cool idea called a snap code. That yellow box with the individual dots is my personal snap code. Everyone who signs up for Snapchat gets one. And uh, you're, you have a different number of dots, and they're arranged in a different way for everyone. And the way this works is if you scan this code, so I would hold my phone up to this, which I'm going to try to do. I think it gives you like an error, but no, I can't do it on this. I'm going to need some, well, you would scan the code. It automatically adds a new friend. So you no longer have to type in a username. You just scan the code. Um, and they made it, yes, yes. And I can't do it because my, I'm mirroring right now, so I, I can't, you know, can't do it to myself. But um, yeah, you, like, so uh, let's say, I'm out for drinks with some friends of mine. We're Snapchatting. Somebody sees we're Snapchatting. Like, oh, I love Snapchat. I have a great account. Like, you should follow me. They can take their phone out, go to this screen. I can just literally hold my phone up to it, tap it, and I add them automatically. Um, that was a really neat feature. That's one of the things that Snapchat did early on that made them very popular. Um, from this screen, you can also see who's added you. This is like for parents um, to see who, who has added my kid on Snapchat. Now, you're still getting, you're not necessarily getting someone's full name, but you're getting their username. So um, a lot of these people have followed me through Instagram, so I don't know who all my followers are. But uh, this is Lauren. She, she's 1111 Social. She's buying her wedding dress. She also runs an account for the Allentown Art Museum. So we can see some information about who that is. Um, you can also add friends just by tapping add friends. And then you have other options. You can use usernames. You can import your contacts. So, you know, you might have... Your old Aunt Mabel might have somehow stumbled across Snapchat, and she may, you may be able to add her, add her if you're not face-to-face -face and can use the snap code, you can use her contacts. And then my friends. Now, this is an interesting thing, and again, you cannot see what your kids are posting unless they post it to your story, but you can tell a little bit about who their friends are. So Snapchat ranks your best friends, whoever you snap the most frequently and whoever snaps you back most frequently. They get those little emojis that are on the right side. Um, so the smiley faces are all the people that you're friends with. And then the fire emoji and the 13 means that that's my twin sister. We've snapped back and forth 13 times without breaking a streak. So that's, um, and again, to teenagers, very important. Seems kind of inconsequential here. But if you're looking at it from like a more business standpoint, I want to know who my most engaged customers are. That's the way I can tell. And then you can see different icons when we scroll down here. KateCast328 has a baby, so she is a new follower of mine. Um, I don't think we've ever snapped back and forth, but the baby means that they're a new follower. Okay, and right there next to Danielle Gould Scotland is that kind of sarcastic face. That means that um, she, I, I am on her best friends list, but she is not on mine. So it's kind of like a dig to your friends to be like, oh, you know, we're not that good, good of friends. She would love if I said that out, out loud. Um, and then there's a, there's a variety of different. Now, you can also customize these. You can change all your icons. But for the most part, people just leave them as they are. Um, up here is trophies. Now, this is you get awards, essentially, for the more that you use Snapchat. So they'll give you these little trophies that you get to keep in your trophy case. 
as just a way that you can show your friends how amazing and popular you are on, on social media. So like this one, I sent 50 snaps using night mode. So I got the moon. And I sent 50 snaps using the black and white filter so I get the panda. They don't really, they don't really affect anything, but you will hear kids talking about it. Like they'll say, oh, I have you know, 12 trophies or I have 16 or whatever. It does mean something to them. And then up top here is the setting. So this is where I said you are managing your app and customizing your app. Um, Manage preferences is where you can, you know, your permissions are. You, you like Snapchat when you open it up, it's going to ask you if it can use your camera, like, or if it can use your microphone. You want to turn those things on so you can use the app. But if you don't turn them on, then you're not going to be able to take pictures and send pictures. Um, edit permission. Oops. No, edit anything. There's your permissions again. Oh, there it was. Sorry. So friend emojis, that's what we were just talking about. Um, so this is like your listing of your friends. So like theoretically, your bay should be your super BFF, and you should have like a hot streak of like 60, 70, right? Give me a yes. Yes, see? Um, you know, your best friends, they should all have a smiley face, or you should be like snapping with them and have the different colored hearts. Now, like I said, you can adjust these. Um, if you want to customize it, you can choose anything here, but most people don't. It's just like another way to customize the app for your use if you want to. But that's a neat, uh, that's an important thing to know because if you're looking, I have a lot of parents that they'll just take their kid's phone at the end of the night, you know, which I think is a good idea. They, they pay for it, it's their phone. And if, um, again, you can't see what they've snapped, but you can see who they're snapping. So if they're grounded and they're not supposed to be snapping their boyfriend, then you might be surprised to find that they did send five Snapchats to them. Um, there's, there's some other uh, support and things like that in here. If you ever get like lost, um, Snapchat support is actually really good. It's not like, it's not like um, you don't get a person on the other end of the phone, you're not calling someone, but they have, have taken great strides. As the app has grown and become a little more mature, they've taken great strides to make it a little more user friendly. So going into support, you can, you know, you can get all of, uh, all, hopefully all of your questions answered. Now I want, a little, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, as we're in the profile here, I want to talk about memories, because this is a fairly new function. Um, Snapchat was known for its disappearing photos and then it decided, well, maybe we should store some photos. Um, so these are your memories. Now, a lot of this stuff is like from Halloween. Um, so I'll just let you, this is like a Halloween snap. I don't think the sound is going to work, but pretty good with the drawing. I'm a pumpkin head in this one. This was to make people laugh on Halloween. Um, and then there's a lot of, do a lot of dogs. There's my friend Rody. Um, there is the ability to hide these from other people. So there is a, a category called for your eyes only. Um, I don't have that turned on because I'm 35. No one looks at my phone other than me. So I don't, have, I don't need to do that. But down at the bottom, all the way bottom, you see the trash can. You see like the up arrow. You see the lock. And then you see the circle. The lock is the for your eyes only. So I don't have anything in there, but if your kids have that turned on, when you hit the lock, it'll say you need to enter a passcode. Um, you know, people are hoping mom and dad don't know about the passcode. If you do go into that and there's a passcode, you might want to ask what's, what's in there. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about stories just to show you guys what the story, like what the stories can do. So um, my friend Lauren and I, a couple, this was like last month, we did a story at the Allentown Art Museum, which I will show you. Hold on. We're going to skip the beginning, but uh, we took photos from the art museum or pictures from the art museum and matched them up to the lyrics. To the lyrics of the song Closer by the Chainsmokers, which was a, it was like the number one song for like six weeks in a row. So this played for, um, we put it on Snapchat, we put it on Instagram, it got 1,400 1, hits. People loved it, it was creative. The art museum got a little touchy with it, but I explained that. You know, as we were trying to match these lyrics up to the pictures, we had to look at things like mood and content and tone, which is all the things that you discuss when you have art history. So this was just a neat way to use that app to get younger people to learn what is in the Allentown Art Museum. We only did one verse. There's not that much art in the art museum. Yep. 
Yes. Yes, it's up for 24 hours, yes. And you can share that with one person or a multiple? You can, so when you put your story up, anyone that's your, that you're friends with can see it, um, but you can block who views it. So let me go back to the story. Um, so these are the people that have viewed it now. I can, I can block, I go in and, like, if I tap and hold, hold on. If I tap and hold on Katie there, I can block her from looking at my stories, block, comes up, or edit friend. But typically when you post a story, you have 24 hours, all of your friends, anyone that follows you on Snapchat will be able to see that. Yes, very similar. Yes, yes. Direct, yeah, that was messaging. So that was just direct one-on-one -on -one communication. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. 24 hours. That's when you set the timer. So like here, I'll, I'll show you. This is another really cool feature. Which I hate taking selfies, but uh, am I right? Okay. Lighting, good, right? Good. All right. So this is like a, a fairly new um, feature where you can add filters to your face. If you tap and hold, see. Now that says sponsored, so that's paid content. Yep. Wow. I'm having a great time. <laughs> now that I'll take yeah we'll take this yeah beautiful um, so I, if I tap the blue arrow it's going to take me to my friend list and I can send that to one individual I can send it to like however many I want but I just just by tapping I'll send it to my sister this friend of mine my brother he'll love that and my mom so I said and then at the, see at the very bottom how it says the four names that's the only people that'll receive that snap. And then um, the purple boxes are videos. The red, purple is video, red is always still photo, and blue is a, is a chat back. So my mom responded, we'll see what she had to say. She just opened it. Um. I would say that's probably the biggest negative of, of social media is that, and it's just like any, like, it's really not that different than how you function in your normal life. What I tell teenagers is like, look, if you're not going to do it face to face, you should not be doing it on Snapchat or on Instagram or Twitter or on any of those applications. Um, you're no different online than you are in, in, your, in your real life. Um, it's, it's kind of a maturity and responsibility thing. You know, it's kind of having that, that discussion. Um, we can go back into Snapchat if you guys want, but I'm just going to like kind of open it up for questions. And um, this is my contact info. Um, if you guys want to get in touch with me, that's the best way to reach me. Go ahead. Yes. 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 Actually, you know what? That's a good question. And let me go back in and show you guys something on my Snapchat. So, when I go to my profile, all right, oh, nice, thank you, yeah, um, where, where it says added me, get down here, hold on, uh, yeah, like, I don't know this person at the top, and, like, I, I mean, it's, it, because it says they added me by username, it's most likely someone that follows me on Instagram, but if I just get this random follower and I'm a little uncomfortable with that, I can just tap and hold on their name, and then the little... See the rivet that's in like the top right corner there? I just tap that and that brings up, I can ignore that person, I can block that person, kind of keep them away from me. We can kind of leave this, we'll leave this on here for right now. Um, I do do like lectures and um, I, I can really do any app, but I just kind of pick Snapchat just because it's so popular, but it is helpful to kind of have someone walk you through it. Uh, so, like I said, my contact information was up there. If anybody has further questions, you can shoot me an email. Um, this is a fairly large group. I've never really done this for a group so large. We usually do, like, like the Cub Scout moms or, like, the soccer dads, like, get together. Um, my office is located in Allentown. We have a really cool space. I'm in Velocity. If you guys have been to, like, the new Allentown, I'm above Centro and right next to Grain. So uh, we do do trainings and things like that. We have a cool training room. It's very laid back. I'll get some craft beers or some good wine, and we can just sit and go through a couple apps 
Um, and the cost is pretty low. It's pretty reasonable. It's usually depending on how large your group is. It's pretty much like 10 bucks a head. Um, that just covers like our costs. Are there any other questions? I know I, I know that we covered like a lot of stuff, and I feel like I talked really fast, but that's just that's the ADD. Yep. Yet to, to sign up for Snapchat, you basically put in your cell phone number and your email address, and you're, you're good to go. Um, you don't have to put in a lot of personal information. Um, if, we go into, if we go into settings, you see that there's my phone number and that's my email. You don't have to put your birthday in, but at, like, so all social media accounts, this is a federal law, you have to be 13 in order to have a social media account. So a lot of parents that have a kid that's 12, I'm like, listen, it's the law. Like, this isn't something that's going to change. So you have to be 13. So it does ask you to put your birthday in, but math is not that difficult. So it's pretty easy to fudge that. But um, they do want to know your birthday. You come up with a username. You see how my name, that's not my real name. Obviously, it's just like, the like that's just my username. I didn't put my real name in there, and, that, I, you know, that's fine. Um, and your email and, and your phone number. And, I mean, I appreciate, like, your... Uh, you remind me of my dad, who was very like hesitant to use any social media, and he will tell me that he doesn't use anything. But my mom is on Facebook, so he kind of knows that it exists. And recently, I found out that he asked my brother to make him a Twitter account so that he could follow the Eagles players, because he found out that all the football players have Twitter and like talk about what they're doing at practice. And you know, he wants to know who's injured, and I don't know if it's for his fantasy football team or whatever. But he kind of put a put a toe in the water to to check it out. And what I found with most people is they they try it, and it's fun. And there's this reward feeling where you're sending a snap to your son who's away, who you can't see that often, and you can send him a picture of the dog or you know the family sitting around having dinner, whatever, and there's this closeness that is created there. So while there is a lot of negative, and I, the safety online is, is, is very, very important, there is so much positive that comes out of it because, again, this is a communication tool, and if you use the tool correctly, there's a huge upside to it. Snapchat. 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 Um, okay, interesting. Um, Snapchat tends to be, I, in my opinion, it's a little more loose and a little more fun and like goofy. Snapchat's more take weird photos with the filters and send them to your friends or make a dumb story and post it to your friends. And Instagram tends to be a little more sophisticated, a little bit more highbrow. You're trying to post really cool photos, right? Or you're, you know, you're, you're trying to, I, like, I, I know a lot of teenagers, um, and you know what, I'll open up my um, Instagram Our account. Here. Yep, go ahead. Middle school kids use Snapchat. High school kids use Instagram. That's probably pretty, that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah, that's probably pretty true. So this is, this is my um, Instagram. I have a lot, oh, this is Lauren's dresses. Good, so we're all over Lauren's wedding dress adventure. This is great. But um, I have a lot of, like, teenagers. This is what I see a lot of on Instagram. Cars, um, Clothes, it's it's more about your things and making your things look cool. Where Snapchat is more loose, right? Like like a little more fun, a little more comedic, and Instagram's a little more. You're creating a gallery, you know. You're you're trying to put together a certain look, a certain aesthetic. That's the word. Yeah. But I would believe that that um, Snapchat's probably young, a little younger. 
or appeals to a more immature side to yourself. That's probably a better way to say it. Go ahead. Yeah, well, um, you can, yeah, it does It does eat up a lot of data, especially if you're doing video, that's going to eat up a lot of data. Um, actually, I I missed the boat on family plans. My parents were like, you want a cell phone? You can buy a cell phone, you know, and, and pay for your own plan. So I, I'm a little lost when it comes to the whole family plan thing, but yeah, um, apps like Snapchat are going to use up a lot of data. Not quite as much as like Netflix where you're streaming, because you're streaming, you know, an hour-long documentary, right? In Snapchat, you're just looking at, 10 second videos, but you're still looking at video and that does use up a lot of data. Um, one of the reasons we talked about symbols that it doesn't have words because of the languages, that would eat up even more of your data because the app would be larger in size. Yeah, that's, that's something I never had to deal with, data. I, I mean, I, pay, I deal with it. Trust me, I have a huge data plan. I work in social media, I'm on my phone all the time and I unfortunately don't always have Wi-Fi, but the people at Verizon are very understanding. They're a great company, at least for me. But uh, yeah, I've never had to share data. I imagine that that is a very frustrating thing, though. Any other questions? Right on cue, but HVAC system shut down. Uh. Or Look, I'd like to thank back to I, I don't know these things all that well. I did the Snapchat today. Hey! <laughs> Not all that hard. I, I really appreciate everybody coming out. I know there was two major soccer games tonight, so I know a lot of people are probably at that park and boys and girls. Um, and thank you. We will be adding a parent university most likely in January. We had a request to do one related to how you fuel athletes, what they should eat, when they should eat it, what they should do. So, um, Mrs. Tanabe, who was Dr. Tanabe, who went into a nutritionist to speak to us about how you get better athletes and what to participate in a variety of sports. I know it's a major issue for middle school kids. Some can eat as early as like 10 45 in the morning. They go play a basketball game and they don't have any food. And then... I got somebody for you there. I know somebody actually through Instagram that's a trainer. If you're interested, I can send the contact over. Um, he runs his own gym and he's a fitness and Works with a lot of uh, high school kids, but I'm sure he works with middle school kids too. So I could, I actually know him through Instagram. So there you go. Good use of social media. <laughs> Coming out, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.